What we're going to do today together is we're going to do the unconference model. Um, there will be no panelists. Um, you, will, you will have to hear me a little bit, but not much. This day is all about small groups of people talking on, about topics that you care about, where you can share challenges, but specifically you're going to share ideas and solutions and tips and tactics. Today is a day to help you rethink how you're doing your work and make connections with people who are also working on similar issues. You are all experts. Good morning. I am Josiah from Hong Kong, and I'm interested in uh, rights, especially the rights for children and privacy and safety on the internet. Uh, hello, I'm Perla from Mexico, and I'm inter interested in e-commerce and pro uh, personal data. Uh, my name is John. I'm from Colombia. I'm very interested about the uh, human rights and youth participation in the internet. Hi, my name is Jose from Mexico, um, and me interesa las telecomunicaciones. <laughs> Hi. My name is Daniel from Chile, and I'm interested in youth participation in building the digital policy of the future. Hi, Arsene Tungali from Congo, child online safety and uh, internet shutdowns. Again, with over 50% of the world not yet connected to the internet, there is still so very much work to be done. IGF provides a place to listen and learn, it is about gaining and sharing knowledge, about making contacts, and learning about different approaches, as this is how we can make long-term, more sustainable progress on the issues we face. And it's vital that we recognize that all those points of view are essential to understanding what policies will be the most beneficial for all of us who depend on the internet and wish to expand its functional utility theme. We should be paying more attention to the people side of the internet, because in the end, that's where all the benefit will lie. We need the network to be affordable. We need it to be accessible in two senses. One, we have to be able to get to it physically, and we also need to deal with people who may have disabilities, who have trouble with vision or hearing or motor uh, movements. We need to make all of the system accessible to those people too. No one should be left out. This global system has the potential to affect our lives every single day, and we hope in a positive way, and as I say, we still have to deal with some of the other side effects, harmful potential side effects. What happens if 100 years from now, the software that created that object doesn't run anymore on the hardware and operating systems of the day. So in the 22nd century, it's possible that none of the software that we used to create content, to create images and movies, is still running. And if we can't interpret the complex files we've created, the information is lost. The 22nd century may have no idea what the 21st century was like if they have no access to our emails, our blogs, our web pages, and all the other digital objects we've created. There's some serious and hard technical, economic, and legal problems associated with preserving digital content over long periods of time. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, and many of you know, that I've been working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for, uh, well, since 1998 on the extension of the internet across the solar system. And before you decide that I've gone crazy, in fact, it's already in operation. We have new software. It's not TCP IP. Uh, I, without going into a lot of detail, it turns out that didn't work over interplanetary distances where the round trip times are 40 minutes to hours. TCP flow control doesn't work very well with that kind of delay in the system. To say nothing of the fact that it's disrupted a disrupted environment. You know, planets are rotating, and we haven't figured out how to stop that. And so if you're talking to something on the surface of a planet and it's rotating, eventually you can't talk to it until it comes around. 
So we have developed a new suite of protocols for interplanetary communication. We have it operating on Mars, on the surface, and in orbiters. It's operating in the International Space Station, and of course it's operating here on Earth. We are experimenting with that software now for mobiles and other kinds of applications. It's standardized by the Consultative Committee on Space Data Systems. It's freely available at SourceForge. Uh, it's freely available to any spacefaring nation that wishes to use these protocols. What we're hoping, frankly, is that if these protocols are adopted as part of the norm, then each new spacecraft that goes off to do some scientific uh, you know, uh, expedition, when it finishes, could be repurposed as a node of an interplanetary backbone. And so over the decades of the remainder of this 21st century, we can build an interplanetary network out of the equipment that we send out there to explore our nearby solar system. 90% of the information available today was generated in the last two years. However, in the world, there are still 103 million young people that don't have a minimum level of literacy. 60% of them are women. Internet allows us to have a plural vision of reality, of reality, demand accountability of our governments, question democracies, innovation and technological progress are exponential in all industries. However, more than 835 million people still live in extreme poverty, 12% of the world population. Prospera Digital aims to get to 7 million women who are part of the Prospera program. And it aims to use mobile phones. Pregnant women and with the two years old babies receive timely and customized information on their mobile phones, and the government obviously improves its capacity to respond. This project has taught us that by means of the internet in a coordinated fashion, with a cross-cutting approach, the government can offer the tools that are needed to have a positive impact in the life of people. And that is to change people's lives, to fill the inequality gap, to have a level footing for the same opportunities. This is what the internet can do. We have now been entrusted with making the model work for the next 10 years. That's a large, uh, large task, given the challenges we face. We know that one half the world is still not connected. And Vint did a fabulous job, didn't he just, in giving us a course on the unfinished business. I think that um, that unfinished business must become our work. And we need to feel the urgency around some of this. You know, my own passion for this internet lies in its very architecture, global, open, inclusive, a tool for connection, communication, and collaboration. But we know that the winds of change are blowing we know that there are challenges that lie before us and issues around the vulnerabilities of some of the technology and issues around some of the uses of the internet that have not been for the general good, but in some ways hurt people who want to use the internet. We have some issues. And we need, as we think about connecting the rest of the world, to face them. Because 10 years into this great, great age, this internet digital age, we understand that this is the existential issue of our internet age, of our 21st internet, that it is a safe internet, and that wherever those technical vulnerabilities lie, we're working hard on them. And where the societal vulnerabilities lie, we have an answer for them. It is time for us as the internet community to put some productive, concrete ideas on the table and to start to be activists about them 
to find the places where we get the normative behavior, whether it be community-based, contractually based, and when and where necessary, government-based, so that the users of the internet feel safe. 